Well, hello everyone. Here we are back with another week walking through the Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer. We're super happy to have you join us. We're here on uh, YouTube and we're also showing up at noon on Fridays on MeWe. We'd love to have you join us and comment and dialogue with us as we go through. Today, I'm here with Miriam Shoemaker, Joy Whitman, and I'm Holly Smith. If you're enjoying these, we're so happy to have you with us. If, you, if this is your first time tuning in, make sure to go to the video below and there's links for the previous weeks as we've journeyed through the book. And make sure to like the video. It helps it get out to other people and it encourages us. And go ahead and subscribe and click that bell so you get notifications. I hope you're following along with us in the book by now. If you are, we are this week, we're gonna be talking about Sabbath. So let's jump right in. Ladies. Go ahead, Miriam. Okay, there's one principle that really stuck out to me, um, not necessarily on Sabbath, but just um, where we come from as people and as creations of God that we can only be satisfied, truly satisfied by the one who is infinite, eternal and able to supply our needs. We are only mm -hmm. at home in God. When we fall away from God, the desire for the infinite remains, but it's displaced. So we're seeking it in other ways, other places. And um, those things generally tend to lead to destruction and not a true peace in your soul yeah. mm -hmm. really that's the bottom line we can only be satisfied in god and mm -hmm. so we need to daily be practicing those things that will draw us closer to him yeah. which would include right. sabbath <laughs> yeah exactly and that's part of part of what i i really stuck out with me a lot was the description that he talks about um advertising and he really goes into into a pretty good in-depth as to how like what you're saying you know when you're falling away from god and how much advertising in in the modern world is just pulls you pulls you away and pulls you into only the direction they want you to be in and mm -hmm. how difficult that can be to eliminate that part of your life, I, you know, really, uh, you know, outside of, you know, it used to be before social media and before the, the internet, it used to be easy. I don't have, you remember um, tape recording, VCR tape recording your, your uh, uh, TV programs. And it was so great because you could go right past all the, the uh, advertisements. And, you know, you can do that still with the DVR, but you can't do it as easily on a lot of things on the internet anymore. I, I mean, because a lot of them, you can't even skip past. Like you go to watch, you know, YouTube videos, mm -hmm. it'll play an ad before you. So you just really can't get away from it now. And it really does uh, do a, a, a good job at pulling you away and, and mm -hmm. really taking your focus off of things. Mm -hmm. which is why you know sabbath becomes a big part of the whole subject here mm -hmm. and the purpose and for it mm -hmm. and advertising is made to create an emptiness in you to want yeah. something to yeah, buy yeah, something yeah. not right. necessarily for your own good it's really just to fill their pockets which you can't blame mm -hmm. companies for trying to make a profit and supplying things, but mm -hmm. you really have to be careful with being talked into buying mm -hmm. things that you really don't need and things that will detract from the meaning in your life. Right. Right. That's why like Sabbath literally means to stop. Mm -hmm. And the advertising is called, I mean, there's a name for it. They call it interruption or distraction advertising and it's purposed to do exactly that, to distract right. us, to interrupt, and to, like you say, to, to, to catch us and draw us in to that. He talks about, it used to be they would advertise a product and tell you the qualities of the product. Now what they do is they show you the empty space in your life 
At yeah. Least or at least they give you a perception of that and how they can fill that need for you, even if the product doesn't do it. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. You will be happy. You will be successful. You will look like this. You will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And Sabbath it, it, literally means to stop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Which is difficult for a lot of people to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is, which makes it all the more necessary. Right. It really right. is. Yes, because I, I like the way he has the comparisons of, you know, between restfulness and restlessness. Yes. I mean, there's, it, it's always fascinating how two words can have only a couple of letters changed in it and can mean complete opposite from one end of the spectrum to the other. Yes. You know, just a couple of the examples, you know, you're talking about, you know, restfulness is slowness, slowness, slowness restlessness is noise uh, or, or hurry quiet versus noise uh delight versus distraction clarity di- versus confusion i mean it's just amazing the differences between those two description words you know what they can really mean in your life yeah yeah true true one of the things i loved about the way he approached sabbath in this book i've, I've mentioned in previous work weeks as we've been journeying through this book, that Jim and I are um, celebrating, observing Sabbath. We have been for about a year and a half now. And had had it been on my heart, so Jim and I have been married for 20 years this year. It had been on my heart before we met and and very shortly into our marriage, um, it was on both of our hearts. And we made attempts at Sabbath. We saw it in the Bible and we we did really what I would call very feeble attempts at Sabbath. We really didn't know what to do with it. We didn't know what to do with ourselves. We didn't, we saw it there, but we didn't, we knew it was from God and we want the things from our Lord, but we just didn't understand it, honestly, and didn't know what to do. And I really think that John Mark Comer does a fabulous job with all of these principles. Um, Mm -hmm. But I really, this one was close to my heart because it had been on my heart for decades. And he really roots it in the scripture which I like, yeah. he, you know, he, he t- takes, and I love, he talks about um, two different places where Sabbath is brought up in the Bible and the difference in how it is brought up. So the first one, you know, he talks about, it's brought up to remember and it's rooted in the creation story. And the second one he brings up how in that scripture, it's in Deuteronomy, it's about observing and that, in that, scripture it's rooted in the exodus from the slavery in egypt and he really takes you deep into how the sabbath is rooted in that remembering our creator and observing Mm -hmm. his goodness and his mighty provision and Mm -hmm. he talks about how the sabbath everything is run through this filter of worship and rest and so when Jim and I first try to do Sabbath, honestly, we didn't know what to do. You know, do you get on your knees all day long and pray? Do you, <laughs> you know, do you just sit around and look at each other? What can you do? What can't you do? And I really like this. It's, you know, like anything, things can become legalistic and we don't want that. That's, that's not right. the Lord wants to, and he talks, but I love how John Mark Comer talks mm-hmm. about these practices are not an end in themselves. The right. goal is to relationship with our God and these practices are a way to get there. And I think right. that heart condition helps yeah. keep us out of legalism. And then these, these filters, we're able to look at things through these filters. And again, with this chapter, we are not going to, in these weeks coming up, not even closely mm-hmm. touch everything that he goes into. It's just so much there. But um, I like he gives us some filters to look through and that's what Jim and I look through. So is it worshipful and restful and lots of things can be worshipful. You know, we go Mm -hmm. and spend the day at the park every Sabbath since we started doing this has been drastically different and we'll go sometimes we're at the park. Sometimes we sleep. There's a name. There's actually a name for the Sabbath map. It's called the Shalof. I'm sorry. I don't speak Hebrew. So if I butchered that word, I apologize. (laughs) I'm not good at the word, but I'm really, really good at the action. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) so it's it's um so sam and then i like the other filters he gives that he talks about because he talks about 
and he really references back to Brueggemann and he references Sabbath as resistance. Mm -hmm. And he talks about the two gods of the Western culture of accomplishment and accumulation. And so that's the other thing we filter through too is Jim and I are project people. So we don't talk about projects. When we walk through our yard, we don't talk about all the things we want to do. We, we look at what we already are blessed with. We enjoy mm -hmm. the blessing of what's already there. There's no talk. Now, once in a while, something will come up. Once it'll say, you know, it'd be nice. Never mind. You know, <laughs> we just back it out. At first, that was frequent. Now it's very infrequent. Mm. We don't talk about projects. We don't look at projects. We don't talk about buying things. We shut off our phones. We shut off the computer. Mm -hmm. We don't look at catalogs, catalogs where things are sold. We don't go out and do commerce. Mm -hmm. And it is so amazing. It is so peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. In, in, a, in a deep, deep soul refreshing way that's beyond description. Okay. Well, and, and I think at the, at uh, earlier part of the of the you alluded or in this chapter you alluded to you know the two parts in the bible genesis and, and deuteronomy where he talks about the rest and i mean just at a very minimal um and and basic level just genesis alone i mean for heaven's sakes when god created the whole universe and the world itself and the people everything everything he did he did it and then he rested and then he did it, and then he rested. I mean, if you can't take direction from just that alone, you know, you, you know, and it, it's just very simple. And the the reason for it is just so very simple, and it's right there. And it's not that God needed rest, right? No, right, right. But he taught us what 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 um, John Mark Comer calls the rhythms of grace. He was teaching mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. right. But we would need. I like that phrase, the rhythms of grace. <laughs> yeah. And it really is, you know, and he talks about how it, it changes the other six days of the week. And I would tell you, with a year and a half under our belt, mm -hmm. we see that happening. I suspect that, you know, a year from now, if we sit down and have this discussion, we'll see it more. Um, but it is changing the rhythms of our life. Um, mm -hmm. I won't say that there aren't Sabbaths that we come crashing into still, um, because there are, there are, but less of them, mm -hmm. less of them. And, and even if we do come crashing in, the fact is, is that when sunset goes down, so for everybody too, so that you know what Sabbath is, the, the traditional mm -hmm. Sabbath was sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. Jim and I, um, again, you know, you have to pray to the Lord and, and have his direction. Um, that was the original Sabbath, the seventh day. Um, Jim and I tried to do a sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. We did four of those. And then we tried four sundown Saturday to sundown Sunday because our church meets on Sunday, like a lot of churches. And we thought that would be a good fit. Um, we ended up going back to the Saturday Sabbath. Um, it just to have your week and then to come to that step. And to just come into that, the presence of the Lord and that refreshing was just right for us. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know, you know, I don't know. Does, does God want us to have it definitely on that day? Does, does it, can it be different? You know, I think there is the spirit of Sabbath, you know, that you have to resolve with the Lord, but we ended up on the Saturday Sabbath. And there are times really we do more than I'd like, but less than when we started, we come crashing into that, but then at sundown, we, we light two candles. He's in the book. He suggests light one for remembering and one for observing and pray and ask, you know, just pray into the Lord's presence and enter in. And it is remarkable. It's different. Mm -hmm. It's so much different than just going on a vacation, although it's like a vacation. And it's so much different than just stopping to rest, although it's super restful. There is mm -hmm. definitely, you know, it's a supernatural. This is the coming with purpose into the presence of the Lord. Yeah. And I don't think, um, you know, going back to your, uh, um, idea of, you know, whether or not 
Saturday or Sunday works for you or, and, and whether or not that's, you know, if, if the Lord has an actual day of the week type thing. And, and I don't, I don't think so, obviously, because everybody's situations are different. I mean, you got people that, you know, what if they're on third shift? Right. Uh, you know, so I, I just, I just think it all depends on the individual person's lifestyle and what they, what day of the week that the Lord is really speaking to them. I mean, it could be a, a Wednesday night to a Thursday night, you know, who knows, but the point is you're, you're dedicating that particular day of the week um, each week to make that, that stop, you know, create that stop for you. Yeah. And the Lord comes in in a powerful way. He just, um, I, I wish I could, I wish I could, I can't put words to it to really, really, it's different than anything else I've ever experienced. It, and it's just, it does bring those scattered pieces back together again. You know, it's like, it, it makes me whole again. Um, well, it's very similar. I think in the, in the concept of fasting also, um, you know, you're, you're stopping to a degree um of something but it's but the whole entire purpose of it is relationship and in bringing yourself closer to the relationship that you have with the lord um more than it is any any kind of physical action and it's just joy go ahead Mary. Mm -hmm. yeah. would you say there is a sort of lack of agenda yes um your your overall purpose is clear but a lack of of agenda and things you want to accomplish with the lord that day you just sort of let the holy spirit lead you into that day and progress through mm -hmm. the day that's an excellent way to put it there's absolutely yeah, special good. purpose but a complete lack of agenda now sometimes mm -hmm. we do make some loose plans um we don't set an alarm clock you know we sleep in we but we don't have our phones on. So if we want to maybe visit with the grandkids that day, we may check with the kids and say, Hey, sometime in the afternoon, could we ride our bikes over? Um, you know, something like that. But other than that, it's yes, it's very loose. We, we generally, there is some, some form to it, but it ebbs and flows too with the season. Like, you know, when the days are longer, Jim and I tend to go to bed relatively early so a lot of times the sun's setting at bedtime or after for us yeah um then in the winter you know the sun's down real early and we have a number of hours before bedtime so it ebbs and flows but we we tend to light the two candles we tend to open with prayer or bible or music or all of the above depending on how you know how much time there is um I know he was in Florida. I think I'd mentioned a few weeks ago, he was in Florida earlier this year and I ended up starting to open with music and two, two and a half hours went by and that's all I did. I just worshiped and worshiped and worshiped, you know, so there's no set agenda other than to enter into his presence purposefully mm -hmm. in the winter. When it's earlier, we usually light the candles and have dinner you know, because it's around dinner time. And so we'll have a, we try not to put, too much emphasis on food be, there's sort of a balance there but we we do celebrate it like you do christmas so all of our food is planned ahead we have all the food made so i'm not to a legalistic point where i don't turn on the stove you know we'll yeah. cook parts of it you know but but for the most part it's planned we know what it is it's there and it's usually something a little more elevated than what we might have you know, the rest of the week, it's something nice. It's something. So when we have dinner, it's, we'll light the candles and it's usually a pretty table and a, a you know, something yummy. We eat, you know, healthy. So it's, um, you know, so we eat really predominantly plant-based and those foods take some time during the week. They're more simple for Sabbath. I'll spend a little more time prepping something a little more elegant, a little more upper, upper scale. And then Saturday we sleep in usually um, we don't set an alarm and we get up we like to we really like to open the day in prayer sometimes if we sleep in a lot we wake up roaring hungry so mm -hmm. sometimes we'll have breakfast and then open the day in prayer mm -hmm. and then you know we'll days like summer like this we'll read a lot of times in the hammock we will spend time in the word um, the, during the day it, it flows a lot 
it's always a little different. Then by the end of Sabbath, we usually close. We do a lot of the things he suggests in the book. Um, you know, traditionally there's a Havdalah candle. They're super expensive. Um, we haven't spent that kind of money on a Havdalah candle, but we do have a candle. We call it the thank you, Jesus candle, <laughs> which is really cool when the grandkids are here. Cause when the grandkids are here, we'll say it's a big deal when you're little to light a candle. Do you want to light the thank you, Jesus candle? Yeah. And when the grandkids are here, we just go around and around saying, thank you, Jesus for, and we just share, mm -hmm. but Jim and I do a similar version of that at the end what was your favorite part of sabbath um you know what were you look what are you looking forward to in the week ahead what are you thankful for what it was a lot of times we open with what was the biggest blessing last week um mm -hmm. which helps us to just stay rooted and you know we, we tend to always as a people be looking toward the future and the book really talks mm -hmm. about god is in eternity and mm -hmm. where we touch eternity is in the present not looking back, not looking in the future. And we always have, we, so Sabbath is really about, we don't look to the future. We don't look at what we're going to do, what we're going to, nothing like that. We really stay in the moment. We stay with it. And we just, you know, even just being in our backyard, we just end up being so grateful when you're in the moment. There's so much, I mean, when you walk with the Lord, if you really stay in the moment, Mm -hmm. And you really open your eyes, look around you. You can't help but bubble up and over with gratitude. Right. And so there's just a lot of joy and gratitude and just enjoying the weather and the beauty and, and each other. And mm -hmm. uh, I think I talked about when we first started Sabbath, that's something I'd like to touch on too is, you know, it's like a budget. I'll hear people say, well, I can't start a budget because I'm broke and I'm in debt. That's, mm -hmm. You need to start a budget. <laughs> Um, and same thing with Sabbath, you know, I've yeah. talked about mom's health was ailing. And when we started Sabbath, it was really, really ramped up. Things were, were really tough. We had read that chapter. We were supposed to take mom to Chris to Florida at Christmas time in um, 2020. And she was too sick. So in January, we no 20. Yeah. So January of yeah. 2021, we took mom and she rode back with my sister, and her husband. And so we rode back together, Jim and I, and we read the chapter on Sabbath and we made a commitment to start it in February. Well, by the time mom got back, things were really ramped up. So the first week we started Sabbath, um, they had put mom on some medication that she did not do well on. And she was really in bad shape. We had to, I had never, my mom was fully mentally capable and very, I had never taken anything from her. I had to take her car keys. I had to, it was not a pretty weekend. I will just say that. Yeah. Um, and it was pretty crazy, pretty unhinged. So that was Sabbath number one. <laughs> Sabbath number two, my mom was at her house withdrawing <laughs> from that medication. I will tell you that was not a pretty week. I was not going to celebrate Sabbath. I told Jim, I'm not going to, he said, and he just said, I am. I said, really? <laughs> okay. Okay. So <laughs> right in the middle of it, we did. Um, and mom actually joined us. And then the third week mom was uh, the third Sabbath mom was off the drug and she was supposed to go home that Saturday and Jim took her and she started projectile vomiting and she had to come back. And that was a fun Sabbath. Um, but, but, we, <laughs> but we observed it and it was, it was in the middle of the most, you know, insane, yeah. time but the lord knew that when we made the commitment to that time the lord knew what that was going to look like and i remember right. about five or six sabbaths later one of the things we close with is what was your favorite part of sabbath and i said you know i i believe eventually i would have seen the power of sabbath you know i would have seen the deep deep connection intimacy with the lord and the supernatural mm -hmm. restoring in sabbath way beyond just mm -hmm. a time of rest but because the Lord brought in the such chaos, yeah, you know, it was, I saw it so much sooner and it's just been, I believe it was life-saving. I really, really do. I know those first Sabbaths for a while, honestly, we slept in, we got up, we ate, we took a nap, mm -hmm. we got up, we ate, we went back and took a nap, we ate, we went to bed. <laughs> that was, that was Sabbath for a while um, <laughs> and we needed it. Yeah. And then we just, Sabbath was a real re reconnecting time for us i mean mm -hmm. with all of that going on you know we're strong mm -hmm. together but that's a it's just a lot and um yeah. it was a real connecting reconnecting time with us and the lord and, and now it's just um 
you know, he talks about, you know, is this, you know, it, it was part of the Ten Commandments. It was something that, you know, Jesus did. Mm -hmm. And is it something that we should be doing today? And John Mark Comer says, yes, you know, Jesus did nothing to nullify that. We should be observing. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, sorry, but I, yeah, just I, before you go a little further, I, one of the things that as you're describing the beginning of your Sabbath and, the, and how things all went and all that, uh, you know, it's one of the the funny parts and fun parts that I got out of this chapter too was the fact that just a governor on the speed of life, you know, and that's really what what the intent is and how, you know, he describes okay. about, you know, a Vespa and how, you know, when you get these things and they have a governor on them, they have a, a, a way to say, hey, you know, you can't go that fast. You have to bring it back. Yeah. And that's, that's really what, what, sabbath does is it it is yeah. it creates a governor on your life you know it does. On, on, but it takes intention yeah mm -hmm. yeah and there's usually really good reasons for our things having governors on them. yeah <laughs> right yes <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely yeah yeah and he talks about you know is it is it a command is it something that we should be doing should, mm -hmm. and he says whether it was or it wasn't, he would still want to do it. And I am, that's mm -hmm. where Jim and I are. Mm -hmm. And I've said in previous yeah. weeks, Jim talks about the sacrifice. It, it is. It's like when you first start tithing, it's a, it's a chunk of time, but right. like mm -hmm. God really knew what he was doing, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. How does your Sabbath tend to affect the rest of your week to come? Mm -hmm. It really does. Uh, like I say, I, I think you know, a year or two from now, I'll be able to say even more than it does now, but I can say after a year and a half, definitely more and more. Um, it Friday is Sabbath preparation day. So it's like getting ready for, you know, a, a vacation or, you know, a, a holiday. And there's an excitement toward that. And there's some preparation toward that. Um, and then we come into, we go to church on Sunday and we go into church. So sometimes we come crashing into Sabbath, but by the time we've rested in Sabbath and we go to church on Sunday, we're just, I mean, I don't know why I even bother where I make up to church on Sundays because there's not an iota of it left usually. <laughs> but it just, you know, it prepares our hearts just to come into the community, you know, of believers together and worship together and, you know, just soak in that word you know we don't have our minds have already been brought into quiet so when we come into service we're in that place and we yeah. just receive so much differently mm -hmm. and going into the week I mean it it's just powerful you know you've invited the Holy Spirit in and and, and he wants that right he wants to reside mm -hmm. in us and, and through us right. and so during the rest of the week it's um Quiet is not a word, a descriptor word that most people, it's not the first descriptor word that people who know me would apply to me usually, but it's <laughs> quieted me. You know, you may not notice it, but. <laughs> it's quieted your heart and your soul. It has. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It, it really yeah. has. Yeah. And it just, um, you know, the first discipline he talks about is silence and solitude. He said he thinks that's the hardest. Mm -hmm. That had been, when I read this book, decades decades of having that in place so for me that wasn't um a hard thing to implement I remember being purposeful about it many years ago but it makes that time so much richer you know in the morning I just um I don't know it's like mm -hmm. it's like I can breathe better all week yeah if that yeah. makes any sense but mm -hmm. sure yeah it makes makes a ton of sense yeah mm -hmm. yeah and it's a realigning. It's like a mini vacation every week. So you think about what a vacation does in your life. And okay. it's like a mini retreat every week. So you think about how you mm -hmm. come off of a retreat, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah. all of those things. And it's a special time for Jim and I together, or, you know, we invite people into Sabbath and we're not rushed to that's yeah. the fun thing about getting together with people on Sabbath is no agenda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the grandkids over and it's just, we just hang out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do whatever comes to the mind at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll go in the pool and there's just no, 
yeah. reason to need to get out or we'll hang out yeah. in the hammock all day and read. And we're reading some great books, you know, together, which is fun. We'll, we, um, last Sabbath, we're reading the, uh, the screw tape letters by C.S. Lewis. And yeah. so we spent hours, we didn't read hours straight, but we read some and we talked and then we napped and then we read a little more and we talked and we ate and, you know, it's just, it's just, um, just good. Yeah. 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 Good. good. Yeah. Yeah. And I like how he talks about observing it like a holiday. We look forward to it, you know, like this mm -hmm. is, you know, this is a Friday. So, um, so like little things, I made myself a little list, you know, I'm a list person. And so I have a list <laughs> it's in a, a page protector. So I could just dry erase, marker it, check everything off and then erase it for next week. And so, mm -hmm. you know, on there I have, and it sounds goofy, but I have, you know, we have cats so we have a dog and two cats so empty the litter box and so that's done and I make sure that water is distilled and the birds are fed we feed the birds and the greenhouse and the garden are watered and the pool is tended to and so all those things mm -hmm. the food we have food prepped I'm trying to think what else is on my list um music prepared I have my smoothie already made for tomorrow and if I don't get it done I'll make it tomorrow you know again we don't hold it legalistically yeah. but we wake up on Sabbath morning and it's really like a vacation I mean it's just mm -hmm. everything's done no it's like he says it's I spent a lot of time just sitting by the window being it's like less stressful mm -hmm. Christmas every week yeah yeah it really is mm -hmm. it really is it's and then you I get the schluff the, the schluff it's great <laughs> <laughs> it's great yeah we love it we love it Lots of sloughing. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in winter Sabbath. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah, which is so nice. I think a nap, you know, when we're kids, we try to get out of naps. When we get a little older, like nap is just. Oh like, my like gosh, naps are awesome. <laughs> so we do a lot of that. Yeah. And that spirit mm -hmm. of restfulness. And I liked how you both brought up the governor. It really is like a governor, mm -hmm. it, it, it's like mm -hmm. a governor on your life. No matter what's going on Friday when the sun goes down, that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Time to slow. Yep. Yep. And I will tell you, there's a real freedom in the phone is off. <laughs> oh, I imagine. Off. Yeah. yeah. Everything's off for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And we do things like I'm a walker, Miriam and I are walking buddies. And so fast walker, we'll go for a walk on Sabbath, but there's no fast walking, strolling, we stroll. <laughs> Which we'll get to in, in a little bit. The <laughs> strolling is yes. part of one of the applications. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> he says, I feel free and I added in there and alive in a new renewed way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He talks about the practice is so foreign and alien to the culture, even our church culture, that it might mm -hmm. take you a while to dial it in. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Remember, you're not in a hurry. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he says to begin, just set a day aside. Yeah. Just set it aside, mm -hmm. clear the schedule, turn off your phone, say a mm -hmm. prayer to invite the Holy Spirit to pastor you into his presence, and then rest and worship in whichever way is life-giving for your soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I mean, I like how he gives a lot of examples and we started with a lot of his and we still actually have a lot of them, but it just, you know, it doesn't have to stay with that. You just set it aside and we are far from perfect with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who, I'm sure not many people are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But it's so life-giving. I like this too. He says, it's not a break in the week to rest up so you can get back to what really matters, work. <laughs> it's the climax, what the entire week has been leading up to. Right. Right. Well, and then he even says, you know, at the very end here, he says that on Saturday evening, when I turn my phone back on and re-enter the modern world, I do so slowly. You know, and that's that's really... Like you say, it's not just a matter of hurry, hurry, you know, get up, r race up to Sabbath and then 
have Sabbath and you're slow and then turn it back on and everything's all back to normal. Yeah. You know, do it slowly, do it, you know, ease back in. And, and I think that's probably one of the obvious advantages of doing it on Saturday, like you were saying, because not only is your, your mind and spirit prepared for yeah. our traditional Sabbath on Sunday morning, going to church, right. but your, your life is too. You don't, in, in most people's, you know, Monday through Friday world, you know, you have that extra day of Sunday to kind of gear yourself back up for the week. Right. You know, and get and slowly get back into routines. Right. So. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He talks about, you have to find the rhythm and you, you, you end up, you stepping into that spirit of restfulness. And like Miriam and asked the rest of the week, you, you really, mm-hmm. there is a different, there is a spirit of restfulness, even mm-hmm. when things get like this was a kind of a crazy week for us and even in that there was a resting Mm. a deeper resting and a deeper trusting yeah good yeah Mm -hmm. a way of working from rest not for rest a way of bearing fruit from abiding not ambition that's good yeah yeah Mm yeah Yeah, that's a good one. Um, let's see. I like this. He says, I feel free, free from the need to do more, get more, be more, free from the spirit, the evil de- demonic spirit of restlessness yeah. that enslaves our society. I feel another spirit, the Holy Spirit of restful calm settle over my whole person. And I find that my ordinary life is enough. Mm-hmm. I think that really encapsulates it well. Yeah. That's a good one. It is very good. Do you ladies For have sure. anything else on Sabbath? No. 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 Well, I ask, you know, I challenge all of you that are watching, give Sabbath a try. Um, the book really, again, we can't even come close to touching mm-hmm. on everything that he shares. We really can't. And at the end, he shares a resource also that you can go online and get, which is Jim and I did. It's super helpful for all four of the practices. But I really challenge you, give Sabbath a try, you know, set, like I said, Jim and I set aside, we tried four Saturday Sabbaths and four Sunday Sabbaths. Um, I don't know what it might look for, like for you, but it is just life-giving. I challenge Miriam and Joy and all of you that are watching, just give it a try. See how the Lord leads. He may lead you completely different than he has us, but it is from the Lord. It is an amazing gift from the Lord. And um, I would highly recommend giving it a try. Comment in the comment section if you observe Sabbath. Um, let us know. And if you're thinking of observing Sabbath, please comment down below and um, share with us your experiences, your hopes, your dreams toward this practice. And until now, we'll see you next week. Next week, we will be talking about simplicity, another excellent one that I found. um, This chapter, the next chapter I found challenged me more than I anticipated. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we'll see you all and um, we'll see you next week back here for simplicity. Thank you.